Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a teacup with some flowers in it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll show you step by step how to do it from start to finish tonight. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for our live show, so if you've got questions, you can ask those and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. Welcome everybody. Glad you're joining us tonight. Hope you're staying cool wherever you are. <laughs> a heat wave going going around the world <laughs> right now. Summer 2022. Oh, yeah. um, I'm using a 10 by 10 inch canvas tonight. Uh, this is the red label canvas from Fredericks, pre-primed, ready to go. Uh, I've sketched on it with uh, just a little bit of blue school chalk, regular school chalk, just to kind of get an idea of where my um, Teacup's going to go here, but uh, we'll be painting it in, and I'll do a little bit more of the um, precision drawing later. Um, as far as brushes go, I kind of grabbed a, little, a hodgepodge of all kinds of different sizes, and not really sure exactly how it's going to go tonight. I'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible. There's a ton of detail in this teacup, um, in the print on it, and I'm going to try to simplify it. So. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to need to have kind of a stiffer bristle brush to get some soft edges. Um, so I grabbed my Aspen brushes, which, ooh, ooh, just dropping everything. Um, Aspen brushes for that. So I've got uh, a few different sizes. I'll mention the brushes as I use them. Then I'm going to have some larger brushes for the background. So I grabbed uh, my 6100 series for those. Um, probably the angle brush and the um, filberts will be kind of the main um, ones for that. And then for the detail, I've got a couple smaller rounds and a couple of angle brushes. Uh, I even grabbed my liner brush. So I don't know. We're, we'll just have to see what uh, what we need as we go. And I dropped my blender here, so oh, I'll grab that there. here in a second. Um, oh, I think, well, yeah, I'm gonna have to fell in a weird place. Um, all right, let me go over colors. I've got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone burnt orange, uh, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow light, cadmium orange. Thank you, honey. Um, quinacridone red. <laughs> Alizarin Crimson. Um, that's a that is a color Windsor Newton color Alizarin Crimson. Um, if you don't have that, just use Quinacridone Magenta here or something similar. Um, ultramarine Blue, Thalo Green, Yellow Shade, Unbleached Titanium, Titanium White, and then this is Glass Glazing Liquid. All right. So you, you don't know the names with me pointing at them? No, when you're pointing at them, I don't know the names. Your brain can't think of the names? No. Okay. My brain <laughs> doesn't work. All right. You broke my brain. I am going to grab my... Actually, let me think. Yeah, I'll go ahead and kind of just sketch it out a little bit. So I'll grab the two filbert here and just a little bit of um, just make a gray with the burnt umber and ultramarine blue. I'm going to spray my paints because I've got air blown on them. It's already drying out. So just a little bit of, of a light gray. And if you want, you can even spray your canvas. That'll kind of open up the pores and let it accept the paint a little bit easier. I'm gonna very, very roughly sketch this um, teacup. So I moved it up a little bit from the reference photo. It was a little bit closer to the bottom edge. And um, so I'm going to leave just about an inch at the bottom here. And it's not a, it's not a particularly like round. Um, it's got like a ruffled edge, so um, it kind of dips in and out, which makes it a little bit more tricky to kind of draw it. But kind of just kind of get this basic oval shape. It's if you took a circle, if you draw a circle and kind of tilted it, that's kind of what, what we're going for here is sort of that 
tilted oval shape here. Um, let me see. That's about right there, I think. Somewhere in there. Somewhere in there like that. And then our teacup is going to kind of split the middle. So if you sort of take that and, and uh, split it down the middle, the teacup is kind of resting right here. And this part and this part are about equal distant. So that's kind of a good place to start for this one. And that's not every teacup, it's just in this particular perspective here. So kind of like this, and then we're, we're losing the edge up into the flowers here, so we're not really having to worry about that too much. And then there's another little kind of shadow right here. And then our detail is going to start in, it's going to kind of mirror this shape here, and it's going to kind of go in through here. like that okay so there's our basic teacup shape and then okay I forgot the lip here but most of it's going to be covered up by flowers so somewhere in there okay so there's our shape we don't even see the handle the handle must be on the back side of this photo um, if you wanted to add the handle you could add it in here if you wanted to do that that would be totally fine all right, and then as far as the flowers go, we're gonna, I'm gonna grab some of the red. We're gonna have a flower here. Our large red flower should be kind of right smack dab in the middle of the canvas. I moved the teacup up, so um, previous it was kind of like here was the center, so it's kind of moved down a little bit, but the center of our, our um, canvas should be right in this area here where this teacup is or this flower is living and let's just go ahead and use some red and block it in okay and then this one has got more yellow Oops, just go ahead and use some yellow in there It's gonna look like a big old blob. That's okay. We're just we're just kind of sketching things in here, so we're not trying to get exactly finished quality on our first go around. We're just trying to kind of get our basic shapes mapped out. I'm gonna get some more of that gray and the uh, it's like a mallow or a rose of Sharon of some sort sort of a almost a hibiscus looking flower in here you said mallow and it reminded mallow. me of mallow cups yeah there there's, there's a flower a called mallow there's a that candy. looks like this there's a candy yeah there is a candy much better <laughs> you can't I don't think you can eat these no <laughs> might be able to nasturtiums you can eat some pansies you can eat there's lots of different or petunias that's what I mean petunias you can eat well it, I'm not snacking on any of the flowers in no. your garden so okay all right just it, saying it wasn't it's an me. option I'm not there yet go ahead and um, sketch out or put in our background whoop got some water drip there let's go ahead and put in our background and then we'll continue our drawing but it's a good start I'm gonna go ahead and grab my angle brush and really any uh, color will do for the background um, I think I'm gonna go a little bit maybe more blue 
to this gray that I've got. So I'm gonna use a little bit more of the ultramarine blue, maybe even a little bit of green, go slightly teal, because the teal will look nice with the red, that green. There's a lot of red and orange in the flowers, and so kind of a greenish blue will look really good as a complementary color for our background. Um, so I'm gonna get some white. Yeah, that's a nice gray there. So the brown just kind of tones it down, makes it a little bit more neutral. And then the ultramarine blue and the burnt, uh, the ultramarine blue and phthalo green yellow shade. Boy, I can't say my words. So I'm just gonna paint that in really fast here. I think that's gonna be a nice color. And get a little bit of the darker color for right in here. Our light's kind of coming from behind and hitting this way in our photo. So there's a shadow kind of coming this way. Kind of cut off a little bit of that teacup there. It's okay. And I realized that I moved the I moved the um, Remove the background, and I think I removed it too low, so I'm gonna push it back up a little bit because that tea cup or the pot is gonna. The saucer, there we go. Not pot, not teacup, <coughs> saucer. It's gonna go all the way up to there. My goodness, I'm already just words. Words are hard. I'm having trouble. Okay, there we go. Nice. And then getting some more. Um, do I want to go lighter or darker back there? Let's start out lighter and see what we think. Just kind of rubbing out that hard edge there. So how you been doing? Yeah, I think lighter color. What? How you been doing? Good. Good. Yeah? To the doctor yesterday. It's always fun. <laughs> Everything's fine. And it wasn't a psychologist, obviously. What? What? Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just look at who you married. That just shows. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. <laughs> the person who talks too much during your videos. Yeah. About random things. <laughs> Everybody doing? I think they're all Chat. doing well. Good. Yeah, the uh, good, good. unusual suspects are hanging out. Nice. Chatting it up. I like it. Okay. So as I can get that straight. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, I think that works. And I'm leaving it kind of blotchy, just, you know, because I want that kind of look. So. If you want it smoother, you can be a little more careful with your application of paint, but I think it looks pretty good. Let me go ahead and get a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of this darker color, and I'm just gonna kinda come up underneath here with that. Darken up that 
shadow right up underneath my saucer. There's the word. Remembered it this time. Um, and then I think I'm going to go with a little bit more of a... Whoops, got a little green there. That's okay. A uh, little bit more of a neutral cream for the teacup itself. It's not pure white. Um, I'm not hating having that green in there. Yeah, that looks all right. So we'll go ahead and I was going to put some gray in it anyways. So this will be a good, good place to start. And we'll just go ahead and let me get a little bit of this darker gray for right in here. I think I'm going to use a little bit of burnt umber. And my key is getting my value dark enough. So I'm going to put that my value scale right up against. Okay, so right up, up against the tea cup is right in that, that area. And then it kind of, so that shadow there should be that dark. <clears throat> so that gives me a kind of a... Um, a reference to go for. That'll be pretty, pretty close there. Maybe a little bit lighter. But there we go. So we'll have that dark there, and then it'll fade out. And then I'm gonna switch, I think, to my blender here. It's just got a little bit more grit to it. And it'll kind of push that paint around for me. So I was working with the four filbert, I think. Two filbert in the Aspen. And then this brush was the 10 angle bright for the background. Need to remind me to say the brushes, honey, because I keep forgetting. Okay, like I'll try. Paying attention. Yeah, like I'm really. Okay. I am now, now that I've been called out. Hey, what brush is that? This is the 3 8 inch blender. Okay. How'd I do? Good. Thank you. Well, thank you. start out with pretty dark color on here it's not even though it's white it's not it's not white um, the actual base color is not white there's a lot of gray and other colors in there there's only a few little areas where they're really it's really white All right so I'm gonna get this light Unbleached titanium that has the white and a little, little bit of the green in it. A little bit of burnt umber. This is just going to be my base color for my light areas of the saucer, teapot, teacup. I gotta bring this out because I kind of lost that edge when I painted the background. And if I use this kind of scrubby brush when I paint this, then these edges will, um, I can't get a hard line, a hard edge on them, so they'll be softer, they'll look a little bit more blendy, and it'll just look a little bit better altogether, I think. Just going through and kind of fuzzing out that edge. So it's not going to be a hard edge. Okay, there we go. Right, and then this part of the teacup is also pretty dark. 
So I'm going to get that dark color and shadow that area right there. And add a little bit of light back here. The light's hitting it, and then there's light on this one here too. Right here, coming down. Okay, and that's going all the way up there, but it's not really there. I'm just go ahead and cut that off because that's flower right in there. In here too. Flower here and here. Okay. those edges a little bit round off that teacup and get my drawing right you know try to get the the drawing looking good I think or my form really is what I mean you know get the form of the teacup in there correct the shape looking right soft edge so see how nice and kind of blendy that edge is that's what gives it kind of that dreamy kind of oil painted look um, soft impressionist look and that's kind of what we're going to go for because otherwise we're going to be in for a long haul in this drawing there's <laughs> a lot to it <laughs> so having it a little bit softer like this will help give us a little bit of wiggle room um, let me let me let this dry really well and let's go ahead and work on the background I'm gonna go back to this for filbert or two filbert I should say sorry keeps it calling it for two filbert um, get some green some blue a little bit of white and some yellow Three colors so let's go and get a little bit of the the, the um, burnt sienna there add that with the blue and the dark green so we'll have a dark middle and light version of this green on that darker and then keep grabbing some of the lighter color and putting some highlights on here and then we'll put some white on here this are this one's more like a bud
this is it's a, white. What? This is a good example of having some good clean under layers. Makes things go easier. You can laugh. Go ahead. <laughs> like really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh wait a minute. Okay, there we go. What? I had the rim shot. Jeez. Oh, I'm using the yellows, both the yellows, a little bit of white, just kind of a dirty yellowy white here for the um, can't, snapdragons. There we go. Snapdragons. And dry for me. All right, so I need to go back into this just one more time here. Still not quite filled in right there really well. A little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of ultra, uh, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, some white here. Really dark shadow right there. And I'm gonna get some glaze and just glaze out the and glaze is just a transparent layer, so the glaze is making my my color transparent so I can go over what I've got there. So I'm just adding my shadow right there. And let's go ahead and add a little bit darker right there, a little bit darker. This is just glaze, so it's just very, very light, transparent color here. And I can use my finger just to kind of rub out the edge if I get a edge that looks a little too hard. start on our well let me let me do one more layer of the lighter here I'm gonna get some white do a little bit of white right here long here but I can put the highlights in later once I get the detail on the teacup itself. So this shape is not quite right right here. Let me just clean that up. Okay. 
So for the grid areas, I'm going to use the cat, the quinacridone burnt orange and the um, alizarin crimson. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of, little, little, little bit of black. Maybe, maybe a little too much. Let me... So it should be just a dark burgundy color. And I'm gonna use my glaze. Kind of start out with that and do, yeah. Okay, so see how, how light this is? This is how I wanna start. I want it really light. We'll darken it up as we go, but I'm going to add this band that goes Cross here. And I think it, it dips a little bit more. All right, good. And then we've got a large flower right here. I'm just gonna kind of use the little very small choppy brush strokes and keep this very light. And follow the form of the cup so make sure that you know, I'm not doing these obviously in my outside the design area but keeping it kind of in the teacup there we go I get as I get more confident with my shapes and I can go back in now and kind of add more detail with the darker tone. Hopefully that's not going to start beeping. That sounds like the beep. Did you hear that? The little thing just made that noise that it does just before it starts beeping. It's 
pickle has not been enjoying the heat. He does not like it because he can't go outside and play all day. When the weather's nice, he'll just sit outside all day. Chase squirrels and birds and stuff. All right, well, you're, you missed, yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Don't know. Okay. So just, here we go. So that's almost all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna obviously refine it a little bit, but That's pretty, pretty close to what we're going to get there. And I'm going to get my small liner brush out to do some of the smaller details, but it looks pretty good. Okay, so then back here, I'm going to get a little bit of white even and add a little bit of white to this and really soften it up for back here. Woo! Not soft at all. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of mark out our biggest areas and then that way we kind of know where where to put everything else. There's one there. There's a thing here. There's another flower here. And keep in mind the, you know, kind of that border that we have around here so these are going to stay about about the same distance away all the way around this area that makes sense so just kind of like that that kind of come all the way around. Oops. Very loose.
get that curve a little bit better. I think I went a little too, too straight across right there. If you don't have alizarin crimson, you can use the quinacridone magenta for this. It's, it's very similar. It's just, this alizarin crimson is a little bit more red. Keeping it loose like this too, you can kind of, um, you know, if you're kind of not sure where, what to include, if you kind of look at your image and squint your eyes a little bit, it kind of blends everything together, kind of mushes all the shapes and things together. And that's the, that's sort of what I'm aiming for. So, um, you can kind of use that as a a guide when you do yours. That can work with uh, spouses also. Or you can, um, what? <laughs> or you can use the traceable. I have the traceable already made for this, so it's available on patreon.com slash angel fine art. Um, I have tricycles for all the paintings that we've done on YouTube since twenty since twenty nine twenty seventeen. Mm -hmm. So lots of lots and lots of tricycles. It's all just one fee for unlimited downloads. At least right now it is. Mm -hmm. That may change in the future if you're. <laughs> yeah, that's the you get the access for the whole month. Mm -hmm. So oh, and it's a calendar month. So right, right now it's middle of the month. You're kind of like, yeah, you can still do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, check your calendar near you, wherever you are in the timeline. Yeah. In the multiverse. Yes. bit darker to the middle of some of the areas where there's more detail. It got a little too dark there, but I'll fix it. Nice. amount of detail that we can still giving it the feel that we're looking for Okay. 
So checking this border here, just making sure that I kind of have it sort of looking right. And this, it kind of continues up out of bounds there. Okay, looks good. zigzaggy lines there and then there's in between the zigzags there's little dots and it's okay if it's not perfect If you look at the reference photo and see what you're seeing there, that's kind of what I'm wanting here. Because when it's that small, you can't really see the detail. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to get the idea of here is that kind of feel of you can see some of the detail, but not all of it. All right, so I'm going to get some of the that background group white, a little bit of that green, a little bit of the white, and unbleached titanium and now I'm going to go back through and just add little bits of this in between soften up and define if I need to as little as you want with this. This is just refining some of our edges, soft, making harder edges out of the soft edges that we have right now. 
even defining some of our shapes a little bit better. brightest white, just straight white. You can find the tip, the lip of my cup here. Highlight that. And then highlight along this edge here. Define this, whoop, define this edge a little bit more. scallops. You can put those in. There we go. Okay, so it's starting to come together a little bit by little bit. I like it. Okay. Need a nice bright light right there. And I'm going to go over the top of my My design there and just like the lights shining on it and lightening it right there and let's do the same thing over here just very lightly you could use zinc white for this if you have it just lightening up covering over but not covering up completely just highlighting that side the lights passing through behind this cup and hitting this area of the cup. I'm just going to wet my finger here and just kind of wipe that back a little bit. So it's not... Nice. Okay. Let's do a little bit on here. A little bit of the light Hitting this, bouncing from the saucer up onto that part of the cup. A little bit right here too. Okay. Pretty close. I'm fairly happy with it, I think. I might get a little bit of my white here, a little bit of the glaze, and just go right up underneath right here. Maybe a little bit of that original cup color and kind of define that bottom edge of that just a little bit against that dark. saucer saucer mark the indentation in the saucer
front of it a little bit. just a final little touch up here and there. So just, especially like in some of these areas where we've highlighted, we might need to go back and kind of you know, touch up some details. Our flowers will be done. I'm gonna grab my 3 8 inch angle, use that for the rose, and I'm gonna use the quinacridone red for the rose. A little bit of white to make it more opaque. So quinacridones are transparent, and I'm going to just that red is. Okay, do there and there. There's a little bit of something right here that's got that color in it. What? Three eighths inch angle. some pretty awesome fans. We do. <laughs> we do. And anybody who acts up gets booted, so that's that, too. That's right. <laughs> and there was no... Uh, we just put the fear of God in them. <laughs> and they, no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's all the good ones that are left. <laughs> and there's been a, no cucumber incident tonight, so that's good. <laughs> Nope. Speaking of, I am drowning in cucumbers. Uh, I, I don't know to, why I said cucumber. I need to get my neighbors in on the fun. Give uh, away a few dozen. Yeah. I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah, I need to bring some to work. Probably have two dozen cucumbers in my fridge right now. <laughs> Just every day I go out and just pick a bunch more. I'm like, I can never keep up with these. There's no way I can eat all these. And then I picked about uh, nine tomatoes today. At least. Easily. Yeah. And then probably yeah. as many or more dozen of the cherry tomatoes. So we've got a few tomatoes coming in. I'm really excited. We just need the jalapenos to come in. We'll be all yeah, set. Yeah, we do have we do have yeah. jalapenos ready to go. We'll have to make some salsa yeah. this weekend. So I want to issue a correction. It's not a cucumber incident. It's a cactus incident. Oh, right. Yes. It makes more sense now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, using both of those to make my pink, really any pink is going to do just kind of a different tone from that one doesn't really matter exactly just want to go I'm going to get a little bit of the darker and kind of start with that pretty 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 Mm 
get more white. orange just in case. I'm not sure if I'm going to need it after all. I wasn't sure what kind of pinks I was going to get from these colors. I thought I might need a orange to make them a little bit more salmon colored, but I think we're doing okay. All right, so mixing quite a bit of white here, and I'm just going to kind of pull from the outer part of the petal in and pull some streaks in these petals here. center has got some green, greenish yellow. in some of this quinacridone red and add my highlights to my brows here. I'm just kind of going in between the petals here to create my highlights. Because the light's coming from behind, they're fairly dark get a little bit of yellow. I've seen some yellow in here. All right, I'm gonna leave that and let's go ahead and work on this one. It's got a lot more yellow in it. And get that darker red. darker. Get some of the burnt orange with the magenta, just like we did with the cup, teacup, and use that. That's why I chose these flowers for this particular painting. It didn't have the flowers in it in the reference photo. I added them with this red that matched the teapot or teacup really pretty. It works really well together. And I like this soft blue in the background too. I think it's working as well. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of do a little something right there with the red. do I have another photo that had these long kind of 
and feathery. Burgundy. It's got too much paint on it. Uh huh? I was trying to get side camera and I just missed it. Mm -hmm. Again, some of the yellow here. I'm going to do the center of the. Rose of Sharon or Mallow or whatever they are here. Adding a little bit of pink yellow or uh, yellow into the petals there. I'm going to get some white and add it. So I've got pink and yellow and white here. Just touching, barely touching to get these kind of like little teeny highlights happening. Off and gonna get some white and just add some white to whoop got some green on there just white try that again Maybe a little bit of this yellow. that white now. I'm gonna 
add more of that white to my mellow flowers here. opposite direction to create streaks of the darker. I'm trying to kind of separate out the petals a little bit with some color. So these just don't have a lot of shape, do they? I need to create a highlight to create some in these make them take shape a little bit better <sighs> I'm tempted to take them out I don't really like them don't really seem to be adding much to the position here. I'm not going to give up yet. Do a little bit more detail on them and see if we can get them the way we like them. Bringing out some darkness from the center maybe. better. I'm not 100% but it's better. I'm gonna get this light yellow here. How you doing hun? I'm good. <clears throat> They've been chatting, chatting about uh, Bobby Dazzler so I've been engaged. Oh, nice. Is it starting up again? I don't think so, but... Every time's a good time to talk about. Exactly. And so the definition of a Bobby Dazzler is anything outstanding, striking, or showy. Interesting. Is it a S Australian term? Sure. Getting some orange here. So the synony synonyms are Angela. Ha. Ah. <laughs> you just... Trying to make up for the... Well, the, the, the dictionary here says uh, the ending is especially an attractive young woman. So, oh, Angela. There you go. Young. Would, I don't know if I qualify for that anymore. It, it's, it says <laughs> British English, so I don't know. Well, you're still younger than me, so... Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That qualifies, I guess. <laughs> and it was an Australian sitcom back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. This is what Chad's talking about. Uh, yeah, about Bobby Desler. So I've been trying to give him some facts, make sure mm -hmm. we stay. You know, we don't want to give anybody bad information on this show. Yeah, right. for their facts about Bobby Dazzlers, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And botany and <sighs> galaxies and science in general and all that stuff. So we always have the facts. <laughs> A little bit dark here. Just need some really dark just not not quite doing it for me I'm 
I'm just getting too much paint on there. It's not sticking, the new coats are not sticking. All right, so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna make a little bit of a dark purpley color with a little bit of ultramarine blue in the burnt orange and quinacridone magenta. get anything else on it. Going for brighter, brighter yellow. There we go. Okay. a little bit of the burnt orange and some yellow oxide to create a dark yellow. I'm going to use that in the centers as well, just kind of shadow the center of it and then get my bright yellow with white. Cadmium yellow light with white. And use that just on the very tip of these just a little bit okay I'm gonna stop there cuz I can tend to overdo again some of the white and a little bit of pink I'm gonna highlight my white petals on that one. Yeah, that looks good. Now they're starting to, sometimes you just need more layers, you know? Sometimes if your painting is just not looking right, sometimes you just need to keep adding layers until it does look right. Getting some quinacridone red with my white here. into white, maybe a little bit of green with some magenta to this one here, just along the stem. I am pretty, pretty happy with that. Does anybody see anything that I missed? Because it's easy to kind of miss stuff when I'm in the middle of painting. Let me get a little bit of the burnt or burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And I'm going to glaze on my tea, tea cup here. Just using those two colors. I'm just going to glaze a little bit of the shadow right here. Glazing is just transparent paint, so you're just adding the glazing medium. It could be water, um, but with 
heavy body acrylics, water tends to cause the binder on the heavy body acrylics to not stick, you know, very well. So you may want to add a little bit of medium of some sort. So either a matte medium or a glazy medium in my case. Just add a little bit of something to help it stick. Doesn't and depending on how visible you want it to be, the more paint you use. So there's no real ratio. It's just however dark you want it to be. So if it's not dark enough, add a little bit more paint. Just adding like some shadows here on my cup. burnt umber or actually black was the color we used right for the for the teacup what oh, I wasn't asking pretty much knew I'm, that you wouldn't know the answer I'm sorry that, <laughs> I should have realized you were just talking to yourself I was talking to myself sorry <laughs> illusion you can create just kind of putting your darks in the right spot you know darks and lights and just playing with it a little bit I'm gonna go back over this a little bit I lose track of time when I get get to go in here. I really do. <laughs> edge a little bit some more just right here get a little bit more white Fitzy's like <sighs> she said she was done <sighs> she does this every time she says she's done and she's not Throwing me 
my shade here. Is kind of a leading edge to the to the cup or to the saucer that that is I'm gonna use the gray from the from before the base color here there is a, a edge to this it's a little bit darker than that white That. Get a little bit of the darker. Go ahead and put another layer on that background too. It's just pretty, pretty see-through. So get some of the green and the ultramarine blue, a little bit of brown, burnt umber, and my white. than I had before, but that's okay. Just kind of dusted over so the other color shows through. A little bit more teal, but I don't mind it. Go with it. Okay, there we go. Ta da! Dump all that in there. And I'm gonna sign it while oh, you're doing that. from Fitzy. <laughs> Such a teenager. Like, <sighs> All right, we had one super chatter tonight. It was Laura. It says, much love to you and your family. COVID is a humbling experience. It reminds us of how important friends and family are. I appreciate you both and everything you do for us. Mm, thank you, Laura. Thank you so much, Laura. Hope you're feeling better. Yeah, and you guys are all friends and family to Absolutely. us, too. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. So we're hoping everybody's staying safe and healthy. Yes. Between the heat and pandemics go. and... 
all that fun stuff. It's been a very wild ride the last few years. We, I was, I've been recording, um, well, uploading the recordings of some of my videos from 2017 back and 2019, and I'm just like, you had no idea what's coming. <laughs> We're just talking about doing stuff and all this different stuff, and I'm just like, yeah, that's it's all going to change very yeah. soon. <laughs> Little do you know. How much we take for granted, you know. Even just like going to the grocery store anymore, my gosh, everything is gone, you know. We're and we we've been so spoiled in the US to be able to get whatever we want when it you know, all year long just about. And now it's not it's not quite like that right now. Yeah. And uh yeah, so we're just blessed for every little health and all that all that mm-hmm. friends family appreciate you guys who are supporting us on patreon allowing us to take saturdays off during the summertime you know having that extra income coming in really gives us a little bit of a buffer to be able to you know, take a break and kind of re regroup and mm-hmm. recharge recharge exactly <laughs> spend time out in the garden spend time with family but there's still work going on what I said but uh, there's still work going on we spent a few hours this weekend working on the the painting list to load up for the new website so yeah well we've got lots more got the yeah if you're if you've been like where's the new website it's coming we're we're still working on it it just required more work from us on our end. Right. It wasn't going to be as easy as we thought it was going to be. We can't just grab the videos from their yeah. existing places. We have to move them. <laughs> yeah, we, we thought the computer was going to be able to just do all that, but mm-hmm. no, we have to manually no, can't. copy so, and paste to yeah, do everything. So. Move, move stuff around, yeah. but it'll be worth it once we do the work and um, get, it, get it all moved. It's just doing it. It's taking some time, so appreciate. Well, oops. And now we'll get into music festival season as long as uh, yeah. things stay somewhat quiet on the COVID pandemic side. COVID front, yeah. And then grandbabies. Then yeah, holidays. We got two grandbabies this coming up in the fall. And before you know it, it's 2023. I know. I know. It's crazy. I know. All right, there we go. That's it. I'm going to stop there. Thanks, guys, for watching, hanging in there with us tonight. And uh, for those who are watching the replay, thank you, too. And we appreciate you guys sharing these videos with folks. Um, YouTube doesn't doesn't always um, share us with new folks. Um, you know, it, it's really based on what our audience does. So if you guys are sharing us, then um, they'll be like, oh, they've obviously got something that is worth sharing, and they'll share it too. So it kind of helps us, gives, gives us a little boost with the algorithm. So if you guys think of it and think of somebody or somewhere that you want to share our videos on social media, there's all kinds of share links down in the description. You just click on the little three it looks I don't know what it looks like like a little triangle kind of shape almost with three dots the share button there click on that and share it on your social media and that really 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 helps us also giving a like and the thumbs up um, on the video and commenting on the video all of that really helps our channel so we appreciate those who do that and um, yeah we'll be back next Tuesday with some urns. Urns are really popular right now. They're in all the decorating magazines. You're seeing them. So we're painting some urns this week, <laughs> next week. <laughs> uh, it's the next best thing to having an actual urn in your house. <laughs> paint it, paint one. <laughs> so that'll be fun. And I'll be coming out with my um, August schedule, hopefully uh, this next week as well. So keep up watch for that. All right. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you next time. (laughs) Bye.